I'm your host, Kaylee, and this is Rebel Wellness. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Kaylee, also known as Coach Kales. So if you don't know me already, I am a longtime fitness professional, wellness coach, and multi-certified nutritionist out here on the West Coast in the United States, if you're listening from a different nation. Rebel Wellness is a space for women around the world who desire a well-rounded understanding over their personal health, who also want to fight the noise of today's diet culture, and who just simply want to access their best health, strength, and life altogether. Nourishing our minds and bodies matters to us, and that's why I hope you find some great nuggets of wisdom and personal reflection on this podcast. So thank you so much for being here. I truly am stoked to have more people that I can kind of have these conversations with, whether or not I actually get to meet you, but it's been pretty fun so far. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. So as a lot of you know, if you've been following most of these episodes this last month, it's been the month of myths. So instead of March Madness, March (laughs) Mythness. So anyways, we're hitting our final myth of this month. And um, this has been pretty fun because I've gotten to really talk about some hot button topics that have actually been unexpectedly prevalent, especially given the recent like Gwyneth Paltrow bone broth for lunch debacle. If you have heard that or seen memes about it, um, I actually talk about collagen, which is the main nutrient found in bone broth that a lot of people think count as protein, but it does not. So if you have that question or you've wondered it, go back to episode 12. It's a really short, quick, full of great wisdom (laughs) about collagen and where you can actually kind of debunk a lot of these weird diets that celebrities are continuing to tout nowadays. So with that said, today's myth we're going to jump right into, do supplements actually help you? Because what people say is supplements are all shams, you just pee them out. A lot of times we think we're getting all our nutrients from our diet when in reality, this is often not the case, especially nowadays. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons, but some of the major ones are like the fact that there's been years of agricultural practices consisting of toxic chemical usage, and it's created poor mineral quality in our soils, and that leads to nutrient-poor staple foods in our diets. But not only that, the traditional American diet, sometimes we call it the SAD diet, the standard American diet, it consists often of significantly more processed foods than any other previous generation because we've gotten really good with technology and science, especially in food science, and that's not always for the better. And on top of that, we have a lot more gut dysbiosis, which essentially is kind of any inflammation that goes in the gut or any different types of disease, so to speak, that is either acknowledged or not acknowledged. With most Americans, it's not really understood. A lot of people just kind of blanket term it as, oh, I've got IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, you know. That is going to impair our body's ability to properly digest and sort of sort these nutrients around into your system because it's so inflamed and disrupted that a lot of the foods we eat actually just pass through the digestive tract and then get excreted through our stools. So that depletes our essential nutrient stores as well. So with all of that said, stay tuned to the end of this quick chat so you can hear my most recommended brands of supplements that I would say I've seen be extremely beneficial, not only for myself or my family, but for my clients, of course. And I also will teach you how to vet ads for supplements for yourself because that's a really important skill, especially with like being targeted by social media like crazy. And I'll also list who is at high risk for nutrient deficiencies. So you can kind of make sure to listen all the way to the end to figure out if you fit into one of those groups. By and large, supplements are concoctions of micronutrients. So what exactly are micronutrients? Micronutrients are our vitamins and minerals that support the multitude of systems in our body. That goes from all the way from our digestion health, detox pathways, quality of our hair, skin, and nails, eyesight, 
development of healthy babies, quality of our joint health, muscle recovery, muscle building, acne or clear skin, and a whole bunch more. That, all of that stuff is correlated directly to your micronutrients. And that sounds crazy, but that's just because when you get into the, the, the physiology of it, looking or the biology of it, and looking at how your cells communicate and thrive, they speak with each other through these micronutrients. So that'd be the best metaphor I could say for understanding what their purpose is, is they're little communicators to tell your body, hey, I'm carrying biotin, like, let's go put this towards your eye health. You know, things like that is basically what micronutrients do for your body. And if you listen to the collagen episode, all of those amino acids are the same thing. Those are micronutrients and they go talk to your joints and say, hey, make a helix structure of me here. I'm going to be a really good quality piece of cartilage for your joint. And as gross as it might sound, that bone broth I was referencing earlier is literally because you are boiling the bones of animals, which is dissolving all of the cartilage, which is the collagen, into the broth. And that's what we drink. We're basically drinking the collagen that was already made on an animal in the form of a kind of soup that is tastier (laughs) than gnawing on a bone. I know that might sound nasty, but when you think about it, now it makes sense why you're getting collagen from these bones that are sitting in a pot boiling for hours on end. So frankly, micronutrients kind of run the show in our body and they are especially key when you're looking for vitality. So what happens without sufficient amounts of micronutrients? This is where we're going to see tons of different deficiencies show up as symptoms. Being deficient in your micronutrients can lead to various health problems, including weakened immune systems, impaired cognitive function, so your brain function will slow down or not work quite as well. Uh, Sometimes this is directly correlated to dementia and um, anemia, poor growth and development in your kids, like we were talking about, and so much more that we really underestimate, honestly. For females that are cycling, This also correlates to how significantly uncomfortable is your period, how heavy is your flow, or maybe you're completely not having a period or a really short one. Those are also influenced by micronutrients. So as you can see, like micronutrients have a huge job in your body, and it's really important for us to become aware of them and know what our body is actually doing so that we can support that and take a lot of the question marks out, stop buying all these random products that you like, you can't put cream on cellulite and make it go away. (laughs) Things like that. Just wasting your money on all of that. You might as well refocus that into testing to understand where your micronutrients are. And that brings me into the next topic. When we're thinking about micronutrients now, now that you kind of understand what they are, what they do, of course, I'm not going to go through and list all of them. When you know that, this is important because you pair it with the understanding that supplements just supplement those micronutrients that you are not getting from your diet. This is key. There is no reason if you have a robust diet day to day, You oftentimes don't need as much in the supplement category as those who don't. However, if you are somebody who's got a huge toxin burden in your lifestyle, no matter how much you eat, you actually might not be getting enough nutrients either. We're going to get into that. But something that takes all these question marks away, if you're like sitting there thinking like, how do I know if I have deficiencies? (laughs) This is where testing comes in. So it's really key to get your major vitamins and minerals tested through either your insurance or a functional medicine practitioner, naturopathic doctor, et cetera. And I always recommend you directly advocate for yourself when you go to talk to your doctor and say like specifically for Western medicine doctors, practitioners, PCPs, et cetera, through your insurance, ask them for a full metabolic panel and it should be covered by your health insurance or at least partially. If they give you pushback, which is really common, a lot of my clients will go in and ask their doctor for that and they'll be like, why? I don't see why you need to unless you're like having these very significant crazy symptoms. And so sometimes you might just have to make up symptoms. And and that might sound weird to you, 
honestly, healthcare in the US is kind of a game and you have to learn how to play the game if you want to get the benefits that you're paying for with your insurance. Like you're paying this every month anyways. Like they should be working for you, not you working for them. They have so many patients, they can't keep track of you perfectly. And I know we want to feel special every time we see our doctor, but instead you have to be the person, walk in, tell them what you want. They don't want to do it for you. Find another doctor. Like not being harsh. It's your health. It matters. You're, you're important. Okay. <laughs> so don't just kind of sit in the passenger seat and be along for the ride because they're obviously not going to really listen a hundred percent when they're listening to like thousands of patients every day. Okay, off the soapbox there. Um, if you have a functional medicine practitioner or a naturopathic doctor, they usually always start with meeting you by doing this anyways, because they understand that this has a lot of um, important knowledge it can bring to the table when they take you in as a patient. If you don't have one or you don't know who to look for, I really love that search engine called ZocDoc. And it'll look at a bunch of practitioners locally for you. That's how I've found all of my past practitioners every time I've moved. And I've found some really amazing doctors on there. And people actually give their firsthand bedside manner reviews and wait time reviews, etc. So you're not just getting kind of a practitioner picked for you. And then you show up and you're just like, I don't know who this person is. And I do recommend for females... It's best if you try to find a female doctor. They will know a lot more about your symptoms and what to look for than male doctors. I can't believe how many years I've spent with a male doctor just because it was my dad's, my dad's doctor for a while. And I just remember cringing thinking about the conversation I had with him about getting off the Depo Provera birth control shot because I, I felt literally batshit crazy on that. I do not recommend you ever do the depo shot. And I definitely don't recommend you encourage your daughters to do it because it is so bad for us. While it can be helpful for certain things, there's better, there's better routes. Anyways, he was trying to explain to me the IUD and it was just comical. Um, So get a female doctor. Okay. They will do you better. A lot of the times these doctors are going to be out of pocket. This is always kind of the cringe factor for people. But I have to remind you or encourage you to understand that investing in your health is always one of the best places you're going to put your money. So I know you want to put your money towards shoes or like fancy workout clothes like Viore or something like that. I know it's so much easier to spend multiple hundreds of dollars on that, but what you're getting back from getting proper testing and help from these professionals is way more important in the now, especially if you're dealing with stubborn fat, crazy hormonal swings, you know, can't sleep at night, uh, your hair is falling out, you know, all of those things are things that these practitioners can help you get answers for that clothing is not going to be able to mask for very long, you know, just to put into perspective. So it's very important that you kind of rework your mindset around what you invest on your health, because it's always going to have the highest return for you in the long run. So what these tests are going to do, whether they run a blood panel on you, most likely they're always going to do that because it's a great snapshot. A lot of practitioners, especially again, on that functional medicine or DO side, They will also run maybe a Dutch test, which is a dried urine metabolite test or a saliva test. There's a whole bunch of different tests you can take to kind of figure out what's going on with you. Definitely recommend you take multiple because it's going to give a lot more answers and a bigger picture. It's kind of like painting a picture and you're only painting like some of the colors in when all you do is get a blood test. That's why we have so many issues with the efficacy of our current model in our general healthcare currently in the US. It's really common too, on the topic of supplements that we're kind of just running around like chickens with our heads cut off and just popping supplements left and right because we're getting kind of targeted by this. Dr. Oz said that all these different things come to play. And we're just like, I think I have to do that. I think I have these symptoms, you know, and we're just taking a bunch of stuff. And when we self-diagnose or just order things like that, you are probably not benefiting your unique needs and deficiencies, and you could be hurting yourself more than helping yourself. So get tested, stop guessing, and go get your unique answers. Super, super key. One of the best things that has shifted with my health coaching is how helpful it's been 
for working in tandem with practitioners for my clients and having these communications either directly between the two of us or all three of us as a kind of all-encompassing healthcare team to get to the bottom of some of these different issues. Because a lot of times I can coach you how to eat as healthfully as possible. I can coach you how to do and move your body and get stronger. But when certain things are so imbalanced or deficient in your body, and I am not qualified to check that, I need my clients to go get this stuff done. And then it's amazing how many question marks get answered once we get the testing done. And it's like, oh my gosh, this totally makes sense why this was this way. This makes sense why you've been having such stubborn belly fat. This makes sense why you have horrible muscle recovery. You know, different things like that are totally answerable by getting tested. So if you haven't picked up the message yet, (laughs) it's totally worth the time and effort to go get that figured out for yourself sooner than later. Don't like pump the brakes on it. Don't drag your heels on it either. Like just make the appointment maybe after this podcast or pause it right now. Find your practitioner, make an appointment, get it done, get it in. And I promise you, you will not feel like it was a waste of time. So why do we always hear this debate about supplements? Are multivitamins worth it? Do you just pee out your supplements? All these supplements are a scam. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is because, at least in the U.S., the supplement industry is not very regulated. Because legally, it doesn't need to be regulated. And if you're listening from another country, it might be good for you to check in how your country regulates supplements because some are actually stricter than others, and some are like far less than others or ours here in the U.S. And that becomes problematic because a lot of supplements are harvested or processed somewhere near maybe something like a plant that is dropping a lot of lead into the soils, and then you're getting higher concentrations of lead in whatever mineral compound you're purchasing And that might not be even on the bottle because they don't have to put it if it's not tested or regulated. And that kind of brings into the potential negative impact when taking multivitamins is because there's this idea that a lot of cheaper multivitamins often include like binders, um, fillers, additives such as dyes. We already know things like yellow number five and red and all of those different dyes do actually cause a lot of either allergic reactions or intolerance reactions in a lot of people. And they tend to also have like hydrogenated oils. And again, like I just said, heavy metals and things like that. We don't want those accumulating in the body because heavy metal toxicity is a circumstance that happens to a lot of us, especially those of us that have slow functioning livers um, or just detox systems that are overburdened anyway. And that can cause a lot of issues as well. Not a topic for today, but this is something where cheap supplements can negatively contribute to these issues. So while these supplements might have good quality nutrients that you're trying to get in, they also have more toxins for the body to fight off. And so the good is not outweighing the bad anymore. The other unfortunate side with this kind of argument from the scientific standpoint is there hasn't been a ton of rigorous studies on multivitamins in general because since it isn't a pharmaceutical and it's not backed by a lot of clout, so to speak, aka not going to cause a lot of profit for big pharma, etc., They don't have a lot of funding to do in-depth studies on every single version of a supplement. And that's also kind of why this industry isn't really regulated by the FDA. So when they've done certain studies and they have found that there are benefits for multivitamins for humans, it didn't really ever account for the quality, the dose, or what combination of vitamins were in their multivitamin. They were basically just kind of all claiming they were taking multivitamins, but it wasn't controlled. And therefore, in the scientific world, that is kind of inconclusive for a developed opinion, essentially. But that brings us into the next part about how do you know what companies are actually good? Because 
just because a lot of cheaper companies will get away with things like this. There are tons of fantastic high quality companies out there that do the due diligence of actually sourcing high quality bioavailable nutrients. Bioavailable means that it can be properly digested by your gut and also third-party tested for quality control with different nutrients that they source. These criteria are important to look for when you're looking for supplements because you want to be taking something that A, can be used by your body because a lot of supplements will use versions of the mineral or vitamin that aren't either activated or able to be first step of processing or assimilation into your body, which basically means they're giving you a form of this vitamin and your body's like, I don't know what to do with that. And it just, it passes out of you. That is something where it contributes to the myth of you just pee it out. Yes, crappy cheap supplements, you do just pee out. However, high quality bioavailable supplements, you don't. And then B is that you don't, you get the proper dosing. So companies that take their supplements seriously also follow the science and develop dosages that actually are more therapeutic. But again, taking advice from your practitioner is going to be helpful for figuring out which dose you need because there is an issue where a lot of us just take whatever is on the back of a random supplement and we don't feel anything changing or whatever. And that's usually because it's not at the dose that becomes therapeutic. So we've all kind of heard the term, the dose determines the poison. Well, the dose also determines the therapy in your body. That's extremely important to know. So if you've just been following a bunch of supplements based off the back and not consulting with a dietitian, nutritionist, or practitioner who has this knowledge for you, um, which like even people like me can give supplement advice because again, since it isn't regulated behind the counter, over the counter, we are able to have these conversations without having a PhD because they are just nutrients. They're not necessarily going to kill you. But to some extent, if they are done improperly or used cheaply, you could have really bad side effects. So you do really want to work with a practitioner with figuring out, am I taking the right supplements? You know, things like that. So here are the four things that I look for when vetting a good quality company. And that is, does this company do third-party testing with certification for the batches? This is going to be on the page. It should be anywhere on the website at the bottom, wherever, where the company will give up their most recent batches certifications for quality by a third-party lab. The next thing is, are they easily absorbable or are they bioavailable? Like I talked about before, are they the right type of nutrient? And then what, well, that's the other thing. What is the type of vitamin or mineral that you are getting? And then also, is it designed for specific needs? So is it a combination of things for specific things like your thyroid or for your joint health, et cetera? So I usually look for all of those categories when I'm kind of vetting a specific company. And a lot of times like I'll have clients just show me all the supplements they're currently taking and we'll kind of look at them together and talk it through. And if I don't know or recognize a company, we'll look it up together and we'll kind of figure out like this doesn't do third party testing. We're not really sure the quality of this supplement, you know, and then you can switch to a source that is third party tested and Oftentimes, they actually can feel the changes because it's actually now a higher quality form and the right dosage. So for a quick list of companies that I trust, and if you want to take notes on this one, feel free. But also, if you want this whole list and a longer list to kind of cross-check your supplements later, I always have show note blogs on rebelwellness.me which you may or may not know about, but it has timestamps for the show. It has summaries of what was talked about in the show and links to things like this that we talk about. So head over to that site, to the blog space. Um, it's under the label episodes, and there's a whole list of every single episode in the show notes on there. So again, that's on rebelwellness.me. So this list of companies is Pure Encapsulations, Thorn Research, Vital Nutrients, 
Gaia, Garden of Life, Designs for Health, Gero Formulas, and then a whole bunch more. And again, that list will be on the website. So who is the most at risk for nutrient deficiencies? This is something that turn your ears on extra high (laughs) because it's more than you'd think. And all of these are like scientifically proven and backed. So they're not just my opinion. I want to make sure that that's clear um, because sometimes these things, I don't want you to feel like you're being personally attacked. It's more so it's just for your knowledge, for something to be aware of moving forward with If you're feeling any type of symptom that makes you kind of question whether or not something is off, checking in on your micronutrients is a fantastic and simple place to start. I mentioned before, unfortunately, 9 out of 10 Americans are deficient in at least one major nutrient. I know, that's crazy. It could even be closer just 10 out of 10 at this point, especially post-pandemic. But I would bet that nearly all of them are lacking in an ample amount of magnesium. And magnesium is involved in literally like 200 plus systems in our body. So that would always be a great place to start for you that you may not actually need uh, any sort of green flag from your doctor about because magnesium is such an essential nutrient in our body and it's extremely hard to overdose on it because everything is usually underdosed anyways and we're really not getting that much of it in our diet day to day, especially the standard American diet or especially if you are somebody who's following an augmented diet and or dieting, aka in a deficit. Um, Diet is such a complicated word because we've kind of turned it into something else and diet literally just is what do you eat every day? It doesn't have to be in a deficit. So when I say diet, that's what I mean by that. I'd say some of the top categories, like I just stated, are anybody who participates in moderate to high level intensity of movement more than two times a week. That bar is not very high. You don't need to be somebody who's doing like four to six workouts a week to fit in this category. Some people who are like consistently at higher risk for deficiencies would be people who run long distance often. Again, even just two times a week is enough. Does spin classes or anything that where you're sweating a ton, like hot yoga, or if you just sweat a ton in yoga, regardless of it being necessarily hot yoga, you are in a position where you might be at risk for deficiencies with your nutrients. Oh, that reminds me. So we always hear the term electrolytes, but often don't really know that they are just simply a combination of minerals the body needs to stay optimally hydrated. Your kidneys use this balance of electrolytes to balance the water ratios in your body. So if you are somebody who's constantly gaining water weight, dropping water weight, like you feel like you puff up and dehydrate a lot, your minerals are not balanced. That's a good sign that something isn't at the same level it needs to be to keep your water in a healthy, balanced equilibrium. It's important to note that electrolytes are how your brain communicates to your muscles. So if you are somebody who's cramps a lot or who has cramped during a sport, that's because you are deficient in your electrolytes. Oftentimes we see calf cramps take guys down in uh, basketball, and that's because they usually are sweating so much and utilizing so much sodium. That's why the athletic trainer will like give them a huge dose of sodium while they're like holding their leg on the floor. That's why sodium is important. A lot of us have been taught to fear salt, fear sodium, and that's simply not true. And it's also hurting us more than it's helping us uh, because it also correlates to a lot of imbalances with our blood pressure and things like that, especially for us females, because we constantly under eat sodium because we're just constantly dieting in our mind. Not all of us, but a lot of us, right? So um, when you're looking for a good quality electrolyte supplement, you're looking for something that's got sodium, magnesium, potassium and sometimes calcium or chloride. Oftentimes they're not always balanced. So I would say that the top recommendations for supplements on the market that I would recommend, it would be Noon, the N-U-U-N, they're the little tubes. You usually see them at like Whole Foods and stuff. Um, Element, L-M-N-T, that one's very salty, but for a lot of us, especially if you're following like a keto diet or you do spin classes or um, you strength train often and intensely, you do need that much sodium. So you could totally get away with drinking those more frequently. Um, There's another brand called Relight, and they have some more specifically formulated Pedialyte packets that have better nutrient ratios, and you can find those at like Target. 
So those would be my best recommendations for electrolytes. I would also recommend always drink one of those during your lifts or any of your cardio of choice or group class, whatever. If you're pelotoning, drink it during that. It's going to make your lifts more effective, your endurance longer, and your recovery better. So just trust me on that. You're going to want to have something in your water. Don't just have purified water. Purified water doesn't have any minerals in it because it's purified. This is partially because we don't have good quality water here for the mass amount of humans in the U.S. that we need to support. So we don't have a lot of spring water readily available like smaller countries like France do. Like France has water fountains with fantastic mineral water (laughs) that's just available for everybody to walk by and fill their water bottle up with. We don't have that here. So we just have massively purified water and it's pulling minerals out of our body to complete the molecule structure. So you really want to make sure that you're rehydrating properly because just simply drinking purified water is not going to hydrate you. So that might be a mini myth that I just kind of debunked (laughs) in this episode that wasn't expected. But if you didn't know that already, you need to add minerals back into your water to be fully hydrated. And to finish the electrolyte tangent, I do not like Gatorade, I do not like liquid IV, and I don't like like general Pedialyte and most of the vitamin waters, etc. A lot of them have different fake colors and dyes that are super unnecessary for your body and could be causing more harm than good. And a lot of times they have a really incomplete mineral panel on the back of them. Some of them just have sugar and sodium, which in an acute moment, if that's all you can get your hands on, go for it. If you can plan ahead, carry packets or one of the little noon tubes with you wherever you go. If you travel, that's going to be way more clutch than drinking one of those cheapy versions. And we got to stop with the Pedialyte because I know that we've all like learned like for hangovers, Pedialyte is the thing to go to. But Pedialyte is literally formulated for babies. You are an adult body. Stop drinking Pedialyte. Get something that has more minerals for your size of human meat suit. All right, honing it all back in to finish out with the final groups that are most likely deficient in micronutrients and should really take this a little more seriously is going to be prenatal and postpartum mothers. Anybody who's using hormonal birth control, it has a huge burden on your liver and your detox pathways, so it can cause a lot of issues even if it doesn't feel like it. Um, Anyone using depression or anxiety medications, Again, a lot of those pharmaceuticals also alter things, especially with your digestion, so they can cause a lot of issues with nutrients because of that. Anybody who's had eating disorders, anybody who's following vegan or dominantly plant-based diets, the most bioavailable nutrients do come from animal proteins and fats. Therefore, if you're removing that from your diet, you have to be extremely conscientious and mindful of what supplements you take because you are no longer getting those from the easiest source, okay? And unfortunately, plants do not have all of those amino acids and things like that, just plain and simple. So you're gonna need to get more nutrients into your diet if you are not consuming animal products. And anybody who leads or has led a long-term bout of a highly stressful life, if you are a, just a mom is stressful enough, or a business career girl, whatever, you probably have become deficient just based off of what stress does to the body. Also, this includes anybody who drinks uh, a lot of alcohol. If you're a consistent drinker, like more than two or three drinks weekly, that dehydrates you. And also with the dehydration comes lack of nutrients getting absorbed into your body and depleting nutrients that are in your mineral stores to try to help your body get those toxins out because unfortunately alcohol is still a toxin. That's why we get the fun experience (laughs) when we're drinking it. And the last category would be anybody who works in a toxic environment. Um, Somebody who is, uh, who cleans and uses cleaning products for their job daily, people who work in chemical factories, things like that. You are definitely at higher risk for mineral deficiencies. I probably didn't list all of the situations, but these are some of the major ones to be aware of because as you can see, probably at least one of those might resonate with you. And so it could be really life-changing for you to start taking your micronutrients seriously.
All right, lovelies, that was a big one, but thank you for tuning in to this episode. And it is our final myth busting March series episode. So I hope this whole series was insightful for you and that you've got a lot more answers to some of the myths you might have heard in the past that I was able to cover. If you have some ideas or suggestions or questions that you'd like to hear for a future sequence, uh, send them my way via DM or whatever comments um, to Instagram at Rebel Wellness Podcast or at Coach by Kales. And I would just also love it if you could take a quick second and put a five star review on whatever you used to listen today. It would absolutely help us grow and it would mean so much to us. And if you heard something great, please share this episode with somebody you think would enjoy it too. Anyways, I will see you next Sunday for a whole new sequence for April and a brand new episode of Rebel Wellness. Do something just for you today. Thanks for joining me on this week's episode of Rebel Wellness. If you loved what you heard and you are ready to take your wellness journey to the next level, follow me on Instagram at Coach by Kales for daily nuggets of health and fitness wisdom. We release new episodes weekly on Sundays, so be sure to click that subscribe button so you never miss an update. As always, lean into your strength, walk with confidence, and celebrate your nourishment. We'll catch you next Sunday on Rebel Wellness.